look at uh, shear wall design, by allowable stress um, design methods uh, today. So, um, so just a brief outline here, we'll look at changes in the 2013 code. Um, just a few major changes there. We'll look at shear wall types, so just a brief review of allowable stress design. Then we'll look at uh, shear wall design with a single layer of reinforcement with multiple layers or distributed reinforcement. We'll talk some about special reinforced shear walls, a little bit about flange shear walls. And then in the 2016 edition of TMS 402, we added some shear friction provisions too. So we'll also look at those. So that's uh, what we'll do today. So as an introduction, just some changes in the 2013 TMS 402 code. I'll highlight three, a reorganization, partially grouted shear wall factor, and the unit strength table. So we did do some reorganization, not in the sense like ACI 318 did. Um, basically what had happened was chapter one just kept growing and growing. So we actually essentially split chapter one into seven chapters. So now we have a part one general, some general requirements, notations, definitions, and quality and construction. Then we have some design requirements, so basically general analysis and design. This includes such things as determining modulus of elasticity, masonry, other things like that. We have a chapter on structural elements, um, focuses primarily on beams and columns, a little bit on walls. We'll look at a few provisions there. Chapter 6 deals with uh, reinforcement, metal accessories, and anchor bolts. Chapter 7 is uh, seismic design requirements. And then we have the engineered design methods, chapter 8, allowable stress design. So if you take everything that was in chapter 2 and just change the 2 to 8, pretty much everything's the same there. We didn't really make any major um, changes to the organization of allowable stress design, but just um, changed it from chapter 2 to chapter 8. Not shown here, but the three basic parts to chapter 8. 8.1 is sort of overall general requirements. Um, related to allowable stress design. Um, 8.2 is unreinforced masonry design. We're not really going to spend much time on that today. And 8.3 then is reinforced masonry design. So that's primarily where we'll be spending our time today. And then you can see the rest of it too in the organization there. We did introduce this partially grouted shear wall factor, gamma sub G, which has a, has a pretty big impact on partially grouted shear walls. So this came about that people were concerned, uh, members of the code committee, other people were concerned that some of our um, design provisions were unconservative for shear for partially grouted shear walls. So if you look at fully grouted shear walls, um, some work done by Davis, a student at Washington State University, uh, looked at roughly about 50, I think it was 56 or so, a little over 50 shear walls um, fully grouted. The ratio of the experimental strength to the nominal strength, nominal strength determined in Chapter 9 strength design, was 1.16, which with actually a rather remarkably small standard deviation given all the high variability of shear. So in other words, if we designed a shear wall and um, then, or maybe I should say built a shear wall in the lab, and tested it on the average, it would test out 16% stronger than what was predicted by our um, nominal strength equations in Chapter 9 um, for shear. For partially grouted walls, then Manet, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it looked at roughly again at 50 partially grouted shear walls. And again, if we built a wall in the lab and tested it, it would test out on the average at about 90% of the predicted strength. So the partially grouted shear wall factor was determined simply as that ratio of 0.9 to 1.16, which is 0.776, rounded down to 0.75, a little higher variability, partially grouted shear walls. And that's the basis of this partially grouted shear wall factor. So it's 0.75 for gr partially grouted shear walls, one for fully grouted shear walls, other cases too, which we won't deal with here in beams and so forth. So that's uh, how that came about, was sort of just this ratio here. There's been a lot of work done on this uh, since then. 
I know of a couple PhD dissertations and other people looking at it. And certainly there are probably better ways of handling it, but this works pretty well. So since the allowable shear stress is the sum of the allowable stress from the masonry, we'll look at those in a little bit, the actual equation, plus the allowable stress for the, any shear reinforcement, then that multiplied by gamma sub g, 0.75 partially grouted shear walls.